Welcome to Little Seeds of Faith, a podcast where children help read a treasured Bible story, and we get a chance to explore and talk about the lessons we learn. Hi, my name is Joni, and I love reading. My most treasured book to read is the Bible. The Bible has great adventures, love stories, stories of hope and truth, and most importantly, stories of faith. Welcome to Little Seeds of Faith. I am here today with Azola. Um, I'm excited to have you here today. Can you tell me how old you are and where you are from? I'm 11 years old, turning 12 in a few weeks coming. And I live in Campton Park, Johannesburg. Can you tell me a few things about you that makes you very interesting? Um, it's arts and craft, reading, and a bubbly personality. What books do you like to read? Do you have a favorite book? The Book of Ruth. The Book of Ruth. Uh, so you draw and do you paint or do you build things with, like, what's your favorite arts and crafts material to use? Painting. Painting. Ooh, what kind of paint do you use? All. All paint. So you do watercolor, acrylic paint, all that stuff. That's awesome. So what are we reading today, Azola? We are reading Ruth. And Ruth has its own chapter in the Bible, and it comes right after the book of what? Of Judges. That's right. Yeah, the book of Judges. And um, so it goes Judges and Ruth. So Ruth happens in the time of the Judges. So in the time of the Judges, we know there are no what? What's Time going of the on? Judges? Yeah. There's no king, right? Yes, the only judges. They're only judges, yeah. And so there's only judges, and so this is when Ruth happens, and so there's no one really controlling, no big leader for all of Israel, right? There's just judges that are kind of in their little groupings. So what else is happening? When do we when we first begin to read the story of Ruth, what is happening in the land? The land was famine. Yeah, there's a famine in the land. So what's a famine? Quite like you know? war or something. Yeah, there's like no water. And so they couldn't grow any crops. They are having a hard time getting food. Hard time growing their crops. Hard time making a livelihood. So that's what a famine is. So we find in the beginning of the story of Ruth that there's this family that, that they're having a hard time finding food and hard time living off the land and so they go to a different land and what do you know about life is when you go someplace else thinking that it's going to be better is it going to always better no no sometimes where you are is the right place to be but it's like the have you ever heard of the saying the grass is always greener on the other side yes yes is it always greener on the other side no 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 right sometimes you have to make where you live where you are better. You have the choice to make it better. Um, But here in this story, we have this family that feels like they need to leave, leave their family and leave their land and see if there's something better out there for them. All right. So um, are we ready to read? Yes. All right. I am going to begin. So during the time of the judges, there was a famine in the land. A man left Bethlehem and Judah with his wife and his two sons to stay in the territory of Moab for a while. The man's name was Elimelech, and his wife's name was Naomi. The names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were were Ephraes from Bethlehem in Judah. They entered the fields of Moab and settled there. Naomi's husband, Elimelech, died, and she was left with her two sons. Her two sons took Moabite women as their wives. One was named Orpah, and the second was named Ruth. After they had lived in Moab for about ten years, both Malon and Chilion also died, and the woman was left without her two children and without her husband. So this story sets up to be very sad. Quite a bit of emotion happening. It's very sad. They leave their land hoping for something better. Um, do they get something better? No. No, what happens within the first 10 years that they're there? Naomi's husband dies. Yeah, her husband dies, 
And then what else happens? Her sons marry Moabite women and soon they die also. Yeah. That's very sad to have your family die. You know, you leave your land and then you're stuck in a new place without your husband or your sons. Um, and she's stuck with these two women that are Moabite women. So she doesn't know them. They're not, you know, they're her daughter-in-laws, but they're new to her. Um, and so she's got a sad. And what's the, do you know the word that she uses to describe her life later on? Maybe a widow. Yeah, she uses the word bitter. She says, my life is bitter. It's like, she doesn't, she's not happy, is she? No. Yeah, no, not very happy. All right, you can begin, you can continue reading now. You're up. She and her daughters-in-law set out to return from the territory of Moab. She left the place where she had been living accompanied, accompanied by her two daughters-in-law and traveled along the road leading back to the land of Judah. Naomi said to them, Each of you, go back to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you, as you have shown to the dead and to me. May the Lord grant each of you rest in the house of a new husband. She kissed them and wept loudly. They said to her, We insist on returning with you to your people. But Naomi replied, Return home, my daughters. Why do you want to go with me? Am I able to have any more sons? Who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. Go on, for I am too old to have another husband. My daughters, my life is much too bitter for you to share, because the Lord's hand has turned against me. Again, they wept loudly, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Naomi said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, Don't play with me to abandon you or return to and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and and your God will be my God. Where you, where you die, I will die. And there will be, and I will be buried. The, may the Lord punish me and do so severely if anything but death separates you and me. That's a very famous few verses there. A lot of people quote that one. Uh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Very. Yeah, it, just, it really shows Ruth's character in those few in those few verses there. So when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped talking to her. The two of them traveled until they came to Bethlehem. Once they were in Bethlehem, Ruth the Moabitess asked Naomi, Will you let me go into the fields and gather fallen grain behind some with whom I find favor? Naomi answered her, Go ahead, my daughter. So Ruth left and entered the field to gather grain behind the harvesters. She happened to be in the portion of the field belonging to Boaz, who was from Elimelech's family. Boaz asked his servant, who was in charge of the harvesters, Whose young woman is this? The servant answered, She's a young Moabite woman returned with Naomi from the territory of Moab. She asked, Will you let me get a fallen grain among the bundles behind the harvesters? She came and has been on her feet since early morning, except that she rested a little in a shelter. Then, Boaz, after finding out who Ruth is, goes and talks to Ruth. And he says to her, Listen, my daughter, don't go and gather grain in another field, and don't leave this one, but stay here close to my female servants. See which field they are harvesting, and follow them. Haven't I ordered the young men not to touch you? When you are thirsty, go and drink from the jars the young men have filled. She fell face down, bowed to the ground, and said to him, 
Why have I found favor with you, so that you notice me, although I am a foreigner? Boaz answered her, "Everything you have done for your mother-in-law since your husband's death has been fully reported to me. How you left your father and mother, and your native land, and how you came to a people you didn't previously know." May the Lord reward you for what you have done, and may you receive a full reward from the Lord of God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for a refuge. I just want to stop there for a quick second. Boaz already knows about Ruth, so what would you say that word has traveled? What about Ruth? Like everyone knows what knows that she is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. Yeah. And they already know about her. So what happens when somebody new comes to town or to school? Um, people start talking about the new person. Yes. Yeah, so you had that happen ever? Like, you're like, oh, who's that new person, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, like, oh, somebody new, right? And so this is what's happening in this town in Bethlehem. Is it like, oh, there's somebody new in town. Who is she? She's a mobile. So everyone knows that she's a foreigner. Uh, in this town, and word has traveled fast. Now, what kind of word has traveled about Ruth? A good word or a bad word? A good word. Yeah, yes. Yeah, everyone knows what about her. Can you tell me? What do they know about Ruth already before they even meet her? They know that she's very kind and loving. Yeah, kind and loving. She's taking care of her mother-in-law. And isn't that what we all want for us if we are somebody new in a new situation that everyone already knows the good things about you, right? You want your good character to shine. <laughs> and that's what Ruth is, yeah? <laughs> so we have Ruth, who's a, a new person in Bethlehem, and she is harvesting grain in a field. Uh, do you know uh, why she's able to go into someone else's field and harvest some grain still? Um, not quite. Okay. So in the law, in the law of Moses, Moses gave, is that the, uh, when you're harvesting a field, you're supposed to leave some grain behind onto the field for the widowers and for the fatherless. And f so that's a way that the town could take care of those that don't have someone to take care of them. Um, and so we have in the story that she's able to go to a field and pick up the leftovers that the harvesters are already collecting. So she's picking up these leftovers, and Boaz sees her, and he's tell he told his people to leave a little bit more. Don't just leave leftovers. Don't try gleaning at all. Make sure you leave a little bit for some of these, you know, widowers and for Ruth to get more than what she would normally get. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's a law that's put into place that God is a way of God telling the people to take care of those that can't take care of themselves. It's a beautiful little bit in there so ruth is getting because if you don't if you can't get food you can't what you can't live or survive yeah yeah you need food right you need to eat so here is ruth getting food not just for herself but also for naomi and boaz is taking care of her making sure she's got a little bit more um which is very kind all right let's continue reading and i think you're up aren't you yes all right she picked up the grain and went into the town where her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She brought out what she had left over from her meal and gave it to her. Her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you gather barley today? And where did you work? May the Lord bless the man who noticed you. Ruth told her mother-in-law whom she had worked with and said, The name of the man I worked with today is Bowers. Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, I think Naomi goes, oh, my, May the Lord bless him, because he has not abandoned his kindness to the living or the dead. The man is a close relative. He is one of our family redeemers. I think Naomi gets so excited here when she realizes who she was, who Ruth met today. My daughter, shouldn't I find rest for you so that you'll be taken care of? Now, isn't Boaz our relative? This evening, he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfumed oil, 
and wear your best clothes. Go down to the threshing floor, but don't let the man know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, notice the place where he's lying. Go in and uncover his feet and lie down. Then he will explain to you what you should do. So Ruth said to her, I will do everything you say. Do you know why Naomi would have been so excited that Ruth met Boaz? Maybe because she wanted Ruth to marry Boaz. Yeah, he's a relative. So that's another thing that's under the law in Moses is that you, when your husband dies um, in the family, like normally you would maybe marry your husband's brother. Uh, so you'd stay in the family. Um, in this case, Naomi, we find that Naomi's too old to have any more sons. And Ruth's not going to wait around for Naomi to give birth to a son and for that son to grow up. Then Naomi, then Ruth would be too old. And so for Ruth to marry and have children, she has to uh, find somebody who else is part of the family, the extended family, to marry her. And so they happened upon Boaz. And so Naomi gets so excited for Ruth because she wants Ruth to be blessed because Ruth has blessed her life. Um, and so she comes up with this plan for Ruth to go and say, you know, to Boaz, I am willing if you are willing. Um, and it's a beautiful story. So Ruth goes down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law had charged her to do. After Boaz ate, and drank, and was in a good spirits, he went to lie down in the end of the pile of barley, and she came secretly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. At midnight, Boaz was startled, turned over, and there, laying at his feet, was a woman. So he asked, Who are you? I am Ruth, your servant. Take me under your wing, for you are a family redeemer. But then he said, May the Lord bless you, my daughter. You have shown more kindness now than before because you have not pursued younger men, whether rich or poor. Now don't be afraid, my daughter. I will do for you whatever you say, since all the people in my town know that you are a woman of noble character. Yes, it is true that I am a family redeemer, but there is a redeemer closer than I am. Stay here tonight. And in the morning, if he wants to redeem you, that's good. Let him redeem you. But if he doesn't want to redeem you as the Lord lives, I will. Now lie down until morning. So the next morning, Ruth goes to her mother-in-law, Naomi, who asks her, What happened, my daughter? Do you think Naomi slept much that night? No. No, I don't think she did. I think she was waiting for Ruth to return. So she's waiting up and she sees Ruth. What happened, my daughter? And Ruth told her everything the man had done for her. She said, so what does Ruth say to Naomi? He gave me these six measures of burly because he said, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Naomi said, my daughter... Wait until you find out how things go, for he won't rest until, unless he resolves this day. So, um, I'm going to just pause here for a second, and let's just talk about what's happening. So, Ruth goes, and, so what does Ruth do in the night? Can you tell me? She laid down on his feet and uncovered them after he was done eating. Yeah. He was startled. He goes, oh, there's somebody at my feet. That would definitely scare me. (laughs) Somebody who's at my feet. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so she was, he was startled. And Ruth saying, you know, can you, will you redeem me? But there's a problem, isn't there? What's the problem that uh, Boaz has? That there's another family redeemer who's much closer than he is. Yeah. So what does that mean? Can you tell me what that means? Maybe... The other one, maybe is a cousin or something. Yeah, it's a closer relative. Yeah, it could be a cousin or, yeah, and he could be a second cousin, maybe. You know, uh, and he's older also, right? Uh, we found he's an older, Boaz is older than the other one. Uh, and so you have to do it in order. There is a way to do it. So you marry a brother and there isn't a brother who's willing to redeem you. Then maybe a cousin. 
Okay, so we're going to find out what happens to to this other redeemer. Does he want to re marry Ruth? That could be a problem, right? It's yes. A little plot twist. Hmm. All right. <laughs> so Boaz has to before he says yes to Ruth, he has to go. So Boaz goes to the gate of the town and sat down there. So soon the family redeemer Boaz had spoken about came by. Boaz asked the redeemer if he would redeem Naomi's family. Uh, the redeemer replied. So just for a little bit of context here, I did skip a few verses. Um, so if you want to read exactly the content of what is said and what happens, something about a shoe comes out. I didn't put that in here because it's a very long reading. Uh, but yes, yeah, so we're going to continue reading. We're just going to skip a little bit in here. But so Boaz goes to the gate. He asks the redeemer if he wants to redeem him and asks him about, tells him, you know, if you redeem uh, Ruth and Naomi, you'll get this land. Uh, but what does this redeemer say? I can't, re I can't redeem it myself or I will ruin my own inheritance. Take my right of redeem redemption because I can't redeem it. He says this, I can't redeem it, sorry. I'm already married. I already have too many things going on. She's all yours. So Boaz is quite happy. So Boaz then takes Ruth and she became his wife. I think probably that very day. Uh, he slept with her and the Lord granted conception to her and she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you without a family redeemer today. May his name become well known in Israel. He will renew your life and certain you in your old age. Indeed, your daughter-in-law who loves you and is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. So Naomi took the child, placed him on her lap, and became a mother to him. This son was named Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. And that's our reading. Thank you for reading that with me. Mm, thank you. Too. Yeah, so we'll just talk about this for just a little bit more here. Um, this reading of the story of Ruth and what a beautiful story, a beautiful story of redemption and somebody who had lost everything. And then at the end, she gained so much. It's such a beautiful blessing. And so the very end, the last verse there is so much is the blessing there. So who is Ruth's great grandson? It is David. David. And then who is, so who would be her great, 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 great grandson? <laughs> follow, follow all the way down the line many, many years. Who's our, who is our redeemer? Balls? No, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus is our redeemer today, right? And Jesus is in the lineage of Ruth. Yeah, through David, right? This is our king, right? Through David was the first king. And all the promises, you know, we know about all the promises in our genealogy, Um we go all the way down the line, and Jesus is in that family line. Uh, that's why this story is so special and so important. So we see that this continuation and this cycle of of this family. Um, so it's great. All right. So can you tell me in this story who had lots of faith and tell me why? Ruth had lots of faith. When Ruth and Oprah had had to leave their mother-in-law and go back to their own parents. But Ruth refused to leave Naomi all alone, although Oprah leaves. Yeah. Yeah, she's stuck with her Naomi. And that's just the beautiful part of the story. Uh, it really shows her character. Um, and says that she had a noble character. And what would I'd love for somebody to say that about me. They have a noble character. I think it's beautiful. Uh, so... Can you tell me about a time in your life that you had to be courageous and stick to uh, courageous and have extra faith and trust in God's going to take care of you? Um, it was when I had to go back to school. 
this last month, July. I was a bit scared that I would be in contact with the virus, but my fam- but with my family and friends on my side, I had to be courageous and trust that God would take care of me. You are ahead of us with your school schedule. So we have our kids haven't gone quite back to school yet. Um, and there definitely is a fear of going back to school. So you've had to overcome it. So tell me about the first day back at school for you. Can you tell me about it, the experience? Uh, it was very quiet. And You're quiet. And we only learned about COVID-19. <laughs> I, yeah, I imagine. That's right. I didn't even think about that. Probably the first few days they talked about COVID-19 and how to stay safe, right? Yes. Yes. Do you have to wear a mask to school? Yes. Yeah, all day. All day. Unless yeah. only when you're going for break. Okay. Yeah. And is it hard? Very. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And... um I, I'm with you. I think it is very scary to the thought of going back to school, uh, but you've had to overcome it. And so you've now that you have been back for a few weeks, uh, are you still worried and scared? No, the school closed eventually. Again. Oh, it did. Oh, it did close again. Yes. So you're not back at school. You're. Are you virtually learning then? Yes, I'm learning at home. Okay. And how is that going for you? Fine. Fine. No, you you say that, but I see the look on your face. It's not fine. I, I think knowing knowing you the short amount of time here and talking with you, I think you probably really miss talking with your friends and being with them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's hard. That's hard to go back to school. And um, I'm sorry that got canceled so quickly for you once again. I hope it can reopen. Is there hope that it's going to reopen for you anytime soon? Yes, they said maybe at the 24th. Okay, so I hope. And uh, did it close because somebody got sick? Yes. No, I think everyone's in the same boat with you. Is They're very scared to go back to school and very worried. And it's, it's a really good time for us to remember to put our trust and faith into God, right? We do our things. We make sure we wear masks and we make sure that we don't touch everything. Um, we make sure we're healthy, but also trust that God's going to take care of us, right? Yes. Yeah, it's a good thing you got had family and friends to help you and talk you through that. It's, that's really good. Not everybody has that, um, and I'm happy that you've had that. So um, we just, you know, we read the story about Ruth, and I always like to switch roles a little bit and have the people that come on my podcast ask some questions um, to the other listeners they can think about at home on their own. So do you have two questions for us today that you'd like to ask the other people listening? What we can learn from this story and how to show kindness from Ruth and show love? Yeah. Thank you. Those are good questions. I really, I think it's important for us to think about how we can be like Ruth and be extra kind to those people around us. And the people, when if we come into a new situation, what are they saying about us? Are they saying the good things about us and they're saying that we have a good character? Or do they say, oh, ooh, she's not very nice. <laughs> we know what, what do we want other people to say about us. Um, hopefully they're all saying, you know, wonderful things about who we are. That's what we want. All right, so before we say goodbye uh, today, I would like to know, do you have a words of wisdom? Do you have a joke or a fun fact you'd like to share today? A joke? Great. What's the joke? I always ask myself why Boss chose Ruth, and I just got the answer that he knew her Ruth. That's a good joke. <laughs> did you come up with that joke yourself, or had you heard it? Came it up by myself. Yeah. My 11 year old likes to make up jokes all the time, also. <laughs> <laughs> and it must be an 11 year old thing to do. To, to, Tell a joke, make it their own jokes. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Azola, for coming on today with me. I had so much fun meeting you and seeing your beautiful personality. You really are, I I can just see from talking with you, you do have a great personality and, I, um, and it's, it's beautiful. Thank so you. So thank you. You too. <laughs> mm-hmm.
I hope this podcast planted a little seed of faith in you today. If you would like to read with me, go to wcfoundation.org. Click on the little seeds of faith icon, scroll down, and there you'll find a spot that says apply here. Did you know that some of our outreach programs help those in financial, medical, and emotional crisis? Bad things happen in the lives of many. We believe in helping those who have stumbled. This includes assisting in the cost of emergency medical procedures, help to those who have lost employment, or those facing a sudden challenge due to emotional difficulties. If you would like to donate, please visit wcfoundation.org and look for the link, Invest in Faith. How can you grow faith throughout your whole life? WCF's Faith Launch Program is designed to help you answer that huge question as you embark on your own life journey. The answer matters because the true measure of our life is faith, learning to set aside our instincts and to trust God and His Son. You develop this faith in the decisions you make, the relationships you form, and the trials you encounter. Faith Launch gives you a set of strong faith-building tools connects you with a network of peers and mentors, and helps you reflect on the best faith plan to help guide you through your journey. Faith Launch starts fall 2020 and is aimed at young adults between the ages of 18 and 35. There is no cost to participate, and to better accommodate your schedule, much of the program will be delivered online. The program wraps up with a final retreat to weave together key learnings and send off participants with fresh faith inspiration. To find out more, visit wcfoundation.org slash faithlaunch.